It's Glover One and Ken here back with another video for you. Today I wanted to take some time to give advice to college age students who are interested in data science. I get a lot of emails, LinkedIn requests, YouTube comments from people who are in this age range that really want to put their best foot forward when it comes to getting a data science job or when it comes to learning this field. These are my recommendations for how to maximize your experience at your university to set you up for a career in data science. If you enjoyed this video, if you find it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos at the intersection of data science and sports analytics, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so that you can see my next weekly video. To start things off, the probability of getting a data science job right out of school is extremely low. I believe the people over at 365 Data Science published some numbers on this. It looks like less than 2% of data scientists have actually gotten that job without having previous work experience. So that is, again, a very small number, and it should be kept in mind. While this is true, your best shot at actually winning one of these jobs is through getting an internship beforehand or doing really incredible project experience. If I could go back, I really wish I would have gotten more internships. I think I started pretty late. I had one my senior year and things like that. And these are what open the most doors for college age people. A lot of the times you'll get an offer even at the end of your internship to continue there going forward. If you start early enough for your first internship, it doesn't really matter where you work. It just matters that you've had an internship and you've gotten some experience. Going forward for your junior and senior year, you really wanna be interning in things that are related to data science. So it's either software engineering or in data analytics or if you can swing one, a data science internship. If you're having trouble getting internships, I really recommend doing research for a professor or being a TA. This looks really good on your resume, and if you get published through working with a professor, that carries a tremendous amount of clout. My second piece of advice is that it doesn't matter necessarily what you study as an undergrad if you're comfortable going back to grad school. Granted, grad school costs a good amount of money and it is a big time investment, but if there's something you're really passionate about in, in the short term, and you can combine that with perhaps data science through grad school later on, there's no problem in pursuing that. An example of this would, would be if I wanted, I was very interested in biology, I wanted to study that in undergrad, and afterwards I went back to grad school to learn these data science skills to get into a bioinformatics role. If you aren't necessarily interested in going back to grad school, I would recommend studying a few different things. So the first is computer science, the second is physics, the third is math or statistics. Those are the kind of the foundations of data science. And if you can double major in CS and one of these quantitative disciplines, that's gonna give you the best shot of getting into a data science role without having to go back to grad school. I think it's also fine to study econ or finance or something in that business realm, but at some point you're gonna to have to prove that you have the math understanding and the coding understanding to really excel in the data science role. I've also seen that some universities are offering data science majors, and I don't think that there's enough information on those yet to really be confident that they will give you a better opportunity in a data science role. I think that Potentially, the information that people are getting through those majors is a little bit more watered down than just the software engineering would be or just the pure math would be. And you really want someone to have at least a very, very strong understanding of one of those two as a data scientist rather than just a general understanding of everything. I think data science is really moving more towards specialization anyway. And I'd rather see someone who's really good at one thing and could kind of pivot into being really good at another thing than to see someone who has kind of this diluted skill set. My third recommendation is to use your professor's free time as much as possible. A lot of professors have office hours, and when you go into office hours, you don't necessarily always have to talk about the course that they're teaching. I mean, these professors are experts in a lot of these fields, and they have so much information to share and so much information to teach you that it's a waste not to use them. I didn't really start capitalizing on my professor's office hours until grad school, and it made an incredible difference to me. There's a lot of opportunities that you can have access to through them. You know, they might know someone actually in industry that could help you get a job. Uh, they also can help you break down problems that you're seeing in your personal projects. So always use these people as a resource, especially if they're receptive to it. 
I think that one great way to get some mentorship while you're in school is through your professors. And professors always appreciate people that are willing to go above and beyond for their courses. You know, these professors have effectively dedicated their lives to the subject matter that they're teaching. And if you show that you're passionate about that, they will definitely appreciate that. My fourth piece of advice is that you should absolutely use the resources that your school has. Your school has a tremendous network, I would imagine, and I would be shocked if there is not an alumni of your school who is a data scientist somewhere. So you can reach out to them, they might have some really good insights, they might even have a potential opening at their company. Schools also have career centers where they can help you with your resume. They also have job boards where you can actually see postings that might not be released to the general public yet. So you really should leverage this network, these resources as much as possible, because to a certain extent they kind of go away after you graduate. It is genuinely in the school's best interest to get you an internship or to get you a job. That looks great for basically their own numbers that they're advertising to people. So they'll always be willing to help you or try to do their best to find an opportunity for you. My next recommendation is that you should do projects that you're interested in and you should share them as much as possible. If you watch my videos a lot, I really harp on this project concept, but even more so for college students, you should be focusing on projects that are relevant to you. If you like, for example, gardening, or you like anime, or you like playing lacrosse, those are all things that have data surrounding them, and you can do a project related to those. If you're interested in the subject matter of your project, you're gonna be a lot more likely to actually complete it and to really put a good amount of focus into it. I'm not sure if I've actually shared this publicly before, but the reason I got into YouTube, the reason I discovered this passion of mine, is because I was required to publish one of my projects that I was doing for, I think it was a deep learning class. And I tried to predict cryptocurrency prices using a recurrent neural net. After I put that on YouTube, it, it got a reasonable amount of traction, and I realized that I loved making these types of videos. So you never know what doing these projects and sharing them can really, can really lead to. My sixth recommendation is that you should either start a data science club or join a data science club at your school. There's a couple different reasons why this can be a really, really valuable experience. First, you get to learn in a, in a different forum, you get to learn along with your peers, and it's really based around self-study. Secondly, these clubs, they give you access to university funds, and you can actually bring in really cool speakers, you can travel places, you can actually get funding for maybe a, you know, a virtual computer that processes a lot more data than you could just on your normal laptop. Meeting and working with like-minded people is how companies get started. It's how you actually really get involved in a community or you can start a community. And these things are one looked upon really well in the job market, but they're also just really important fundamental team building skills that you need to succeed in the workplace. Through these clubs and resources, you might also have the opportunity to work at a startup or at a, at a VC or an incubator. A lot of these companies are open to students. They want people that have this data science skill set, and you can be around some really interesting people who are more advanced in this field and you can potentially learn from them. For example, in Chicago, there is a incubator called 1871, and through my university, I was able to go work there every Friday. I met a lot of really interesting people and it led to some potential job opportunities. Branching off of this, I really recommend you take advantage of any conferences or meetups where you get a student rate. So I have to pay full price for stuff now and it is so much more expensive, it's unbelievable. You can go to the MIT Sloan Sports Analytics Conference and your club might even be able to pay for you to go. You can go to a bunch of these different technology shows. You can see these different speakers um, talk about what's cutting edge in the field, and you pay a, a fraction of the price that a normal participant would have to. My last piece of advice is that I know that the job search can be scary, but it really shouldn't be. You know, if you don't get a data science job right now, there's plenty of opportunities for you to get one down the road. As I said, there's very few data science opportunities in general open to people that are just graduating from college. I know that I personally have I've been rejected from so many more job uh, opportunities than the ones that I've actually gotten offers for. So it's a normal part of the process and you should learn to embrace it. You should learn to 
basically learn from these different experiences. I would also say that becoming a data scientist is a journey, not a destination. Once you become a data scientist, you still have to continue to learn at a very rapid rate. You still are challenged every day, and that's kind of still the beginning of the process. There's so much further to go. There's so much to learn within this field. So you should really take this mindset of learning and constant growth with you everywhere you go. I hope that this video was helpful to university students and good luck on your data science journey.